up guys today I'm gonna show y'all how to do a, a six inch pipe carbon ER70S6 copper free wire and uh, right here I have the pipe all prepped up as you can see made it attack it up I'm using a 532 spacer from a stick rod just took off the flux and bent it in in, in a U or V shape I'm uh, checking my high low see if my gap is good all the way around prepped inside about you got to you got to grind inside and out outside. you know make sure you get all the mill scale off um, well let me just tack it up i'm gonna use three penetrated tacks and then i'll mock it up in a 6g position 6g i got three penetrated tacks one at 12 o'clock three nine o'clock and three o'clock reason i got this bottom open it gives it allows me to go from farther start Usually some people start from straight down center of the pipe, but I like to start a little bit off of it, probably like at the five o'clock mark. Uh, makes it easier for when I'm doing my hard side. I have to use my hard side less, or be on my hard side less. Uh, I'm gonna keep my rod inside the pipe using the back feed uh, method. And uh, I'm just gonna be traveling up the pipe all the way till I close up to my first tack. And then I'll start on the other side and just finish it off. Uh, I'm running at uh, 100 amps, and it's uh, gonna look. What about the stick out on your stick tungsten? Stick out, uh, not too sure if you can see from there, but not too much. I'm gonna be using the freehand technique. Also, resting my fingers on the pipe, and this, this is how it will look. Basically, I'm just gonna move up and down, up and down. Keeping the the wire on the top side of the yes. bevel. Yep, all the way up. All the way up. All right. All right, guys. We're trying to get you a nice little arch shot here. Basically, you want to keep the the rod in the back. Well, this this uh this is for the bottom. You want to keep the rod in the back. Keep it keep it levitated on on the, the puddle. You know what I mean? Keep the tension in the puddle. Keep the tension on the puddle. You, you don't really want to let off, but if you do, just just feed that wire back in. You know. And it's a constant feed with his, with his hand. Once the wire runs low, he'll just have to feed it. As you can see, not very much, but you know, you after a while you get the uh, you get the feel for it. You know, watching yeah, the go, bevel break down. Yeah, make sure you break, break down both sides of the bevels. Just feed it. It's not, nothing too hard to it. All right, guys. So now we're getting towards the the side of the pipe. You don't want to put the wire as deep as deep inside but you still want it a little bit on the on the id just so it'll build up you can see it slowly slowly building up on the side you know once you get up to the top uh some people like to dab it but you could still keep the tension on there just you just got to make sure that you know it doesn't um get too fat on you if you ever get on it no matter don't even risk it just stop Position yourself better and uh, restart again. Simple. I always like to feather my uh, stops and starts. Using it, making it into a lot. All right, guys, this is what he meant with, when you got to feather your start and stops. You want it to look kind of blue, at least for carbon steel. That way it, it'll just melt off as soon as you get there. You're going to want to warm up the the start and then start to add your wire and then when you get to the top uh, i'll show you how the tie-in looks yeah as you see he warmed up the top just manipulating the tungsten side to side dabbing the puddle and uh he's getting pretty close up to this uh tie-in so uh, guys i'll show you that right now all right guys as you can see he's just constantly feeding with his hand constantly feeding and uh here comes the, the tying just want to get it nice and warm nice and warm and uh you know just let it fuse you know there you go that's what you want let it get red hot and then you pull out of it slow when you pull out, you don't want to pull out right on your puddle. You want to pull off somewhere to the side of the bevels where you can grind off. There you go. Gosh. 
shit hurt my finger. All right, this is where the flexibility comes into play. You know, you just wanna, you could use your right hand or you could use your left hand. If you're, if you could use both hands, use the, use your other hand. But if, if you're more confident on a test, just use your right hand. You just have to get in an uncomfortable position. Some people put a crescent wrench just to lean on it. Um, but it's completely up to you. As long as the root goes in, you know what I mean? You can walk it if you can. And some people could walk the roots, but freehand seems to be a little bit uh, quicker. All right, guys, another thing to mention is you only really want to go about halfway on the pipe. You can go a little bit more, but if you finish one whole side, that increases the chances of your gap tightening. Uh, so you just really want to get the bottom done first and then move on to the top. Alright guys, this, this top side of the pipe, it's a different method than the bottom side. Because if you do the same thing on the bottom, you're just gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna drip. So I'm gonna show y'all right now the technique that he's using on the top to make it look the same size as the bottom, all slicked around, you know? So uh, I'm gonna try to get y'all a little right, You can kind of see the wire is not as deep into the bevels. It's like a little bit inside the bevel. And he's just keeping the tension on there. Uh, when he has to feed the wire, he'll just dip it. If, if the gap starts to tighten on you, you would just use the, the tungsten to open up the walls and then dip some wire accordingly, you know? And if it's way too tight, you turn up the heat. Turn up like 10, 5, whatever, whatever you feel like. But so far, he's kept the same amperages all the way around because he had some nice tacks in there. And... Uh, like he did what I said, he welded the bottom side first and then he moved up to the top. All right guys, uh, the tying is usually the trickiest part. All you wanna do is feather that the, the tying spot and um, once you get to the tying, just dab the metal. Dab the metal until you get maybe like half an inch past it and then um, just pull off to the side of the bevel and it should all come out good. Pop off right to the side, let it get warmed up. At that point, you're already fused. And there she goes. All right, guys. Now that your hot or that your root root is complete, what most people do is they'll grind off any uh, silica. As you can see the the raw leaf, some sort of silica. So you just want to grind something something light, not too deep, because you can suck back if you if you grind too deep, or maybe even blow through. But uh, we'll show you right now. It's just a, light, a little light grind just to get any trash out all around the pipe. All right, guys, as you can see the before and after, just a little light grind, you know, make everything smooth, get rid of any high spots or anything like that, you know. You want to throw in your hot pass. What are you going to hot pass at, Daniel? Uh, about like 130. About 130 amps. Try to see if we could push out the, the root. I'm assuming he's going to, you're going to use a 332 rod? I assume he's using a 332 rod just to, because uh, if you use a 1 8 you'll, you'll have to stay there longer to, to burn, to burn the, the rod. So if you use a 332, you could just move quicker. Because if you stay in one spot too long with the heat, it'll suck your root back. But if you move at a, at a consistent rate, you know, you have better chances of, of it pushing out. Guys, he got a, a cup, he got a cup on the, on his finger prevent it from heating up he's gonna go with a he's gonna go with a freehand technique just to move across the pipe a little quicker seeing that this pipe is a little thinner than the usual uh but yeah guys just take it nice and slow i'm gonna try to get you a little hard shot you gotta make sure you're hitting the walls and that's enough all right guys that's the hot pass nothing too fancy you know this is all gonna get covered up we're turning up to 150 now to start the fills. You can either throw one fill on the bottom, one fill on the top, or if it's narrow enough, just keep keep flushing the way with one bead. But uh, just make sure you burn both walls. Remember, heat is your friend. Nothing lives in a volcano, so turn, turn the machine up. All right, guys, you just wanna go side to side. The heat will burn both walls. This pipe is pretty thin, so not really a problem of lack of fusion here. Just keep that wire in there. 
the keep the wire on the top side of the bevel. Because it's so it's so thin, you can still set the back. Wanna feed it little by little. Guys, you can see Daniel's flushed out with the pipe all the way around. He's about to throw in his cap. He's gonna go in. He's gonna go for a 2B cap, but if needed, if to get rid of any undercut, he might throw a third. But he'll try to do it in two. And um, what amps would you be running for that? Probably 150. 150 amps. 150 amps. If anything, he'll 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 lower it down, and I'll let y'all guys know. But uh, yeah, it's flushed out, ready to cap. Let it cool down before you hit, hit your cap. All right, guys, as you can see, you want to throw your first bead from the bottom bevel. So a little bit, maybe like, maybe like three quarters of the whole gap. And then your next bead, it'll be thrown from the middle all the way to the other side of the, the bevel. And uh, I think he'll be able to get it with two, a two bead cap. That's what the motion looks like. Just back and forth, you know, real steady. Keeping the wire in the middle. Keeping consistency is the key to, to having a good cap. It's all in the flick of the wrist. You don't really gotta be moving the arm too much. It's just mostly your wrist. Right, guys, there goes the first bead all the way around. You wanna finish one whole bead in a whole circle and then jump to your second bead and then finish it off in a whole circle. You don't want to throw both sides of your cap on this side and then leave this side still flush. You want to you want to go uh, by layers on your cap. So you want to start always stacking from the bottom up on your caps. Just keep the same consistency all the way out. You just got to let the pipe cool down maybe like five minutes or turn down a couple amps. But right now we got time. So we're just going to let it cool off. You know, go get a drink of water, or whatever, um, and it should be ready for the for the next bead. All right, guys, that's the finished product. As you can see, a two bead cap all the way around. Like I said, you want to stack that second bead from the top bevel to about halfway of your other uh, lower bead, and at the very end, you want to just uh, grind out any uh, fish eyes or anything. But uh, it's all good. All good, all consistent, all the way around. You know, you just want to take your time with it. You know? Anyways, guys, that concludes today's video. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. But most of all, comment what y'all would like to see, what type of metal y'all would like to see being welded, like stainless, Inconel, uh, some more carbon. Uh, we could probably try to find some chrome. But uh, it's all mostly the same, but just different uh, concepts on some parts of it. <laughs> But uh, yeah guys, we out.